I've been reading and watching The Walking Dead for over a year now, and I'm not gonna lie, it is a very good show and a very good comic. Well, I kind of went overboard. I've collected them all. All. Every. Single. Comic. Well. I mean. Let's get started. Because today we are going to be showing every single The Walking Dead volume in context or whatever. So then, well, I'm going to be showing you every single one. And I'm going to tell you what happens in them kind of I'm not going to be spoiling them but what I'm going to be doing because that's what the reviews are for what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you why you should read The Walking Dead some great stuff about it so yeah let's start now let's begin with um the Here's Negan release this is about Negan the villain um, I've read this one twice now. It's very good. Um, oh, I'm also going to tell you how many times I've read each one. Um, yeah, I just re re read this one recently, and it's really good. I'd highly recommend it. Don't read this one until you get to Volume 17 of The Walking Dead. I'd say don't read it till you finish the series. I read it when I got to Volume 7. It wasn't enjoyable when I read it when I got to Volume 7, but it was enjoyable when I reread it after the whole series. So, let me go get Volume 17 right now. No, I will see that in a little bit. Okay, so here's Negan. I'm gonna... I will mention this later. Um, so yeah, get this after you finish the series, if you're interested in it. Now for this next segment, by the way, this is gonna be a long video. Um... For this next segment, I'm going to hold up every single one, because I just think that's so cool. So, one minute, I'll be back. I'm not going to... Okay. Oh, it's about to fall. Okay. They are very heavy. This is a very heavy thing. Oh, and here they all are, in all their glory for proof that I'm not doing anything. I have to hold my knee up. <clears throat> Yep, there's all of them. I'm gonna go put this down. Yeah. I don't recommend holding all of those. It's kind of crazy. Now let's get to the main series. First, we begin with Volume 1. This isn't the first one I got, actually. But it's the first one I entirely read. Um, I yes, get Volume 1 first and get Volume 32 last. But, um, I got Volume 2 first from my dad. My dad gave it to me because he bought it when he was a fan and uh, he's he wanted to collect them all like I did and just never got to it. But I did. But here's volume one of The Walking Dead. There's a Rick on the cover that is he's this is how Tony Moore drew him. Um, he's way different in, in um, the other ones because Charlie Adler drew him um here let's see if we get another yeah this is how tony moore always drew him and um the reason he didn't robert kirkman and tony moore went in separate directions was because tony moore he couldn't keep up with um the schedule and so they got charlie adler or whatever um lori uh, I hate Lori so much. She, I mean, I hate her more in the TV show than I did in the comics. I think she's pretty enjoyable in the comics. But in the TV show, she's like, Rick, kill Shane. But then an hour later, she's like, no, why'd you kill Shane? It's so stupid. But yeah, the, he, Charlie Adler drew, Tony Moore drew, drew, drew Lori way more different. I think Carl's pretty close to how Charlie made it. But there's still a big difference. Um, I really like this one besides... Um, I don't like it. This one doesn't age well because of the art changing. But I really did love this one. Um, I've read... I just reread this one recently. I'm rereading the series, actually. Um, when I... When... Um, when... Um, I'll say somebody. 
because I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't read it, it says read it again at the end of the series. I was like, I guess I'll read it again. So, Volume 1 of The Walking Dead, very, very good. I love The Walking Dead, Volume 1. It's truly extraordinary. Um, Volume 2. I'm rereading this one right now. Um, I'm rereading it, and it might be one of my favorite early volumes. I feel like no one really gives Volume 2 in the farm, and when they're all out and about enough credit, I feel like this is one of the best times for The Walking Dead. And, um, so I'm rereading this one right now, so I guess I'll count that. I've probably reread this one five times. I love it that much. I feel like I, I feel like it's very underrated. I don't really know the community, but I know most of people's favorites are all at war. Those are most of my favorites too, but this is really up there for the early days. It might be my favorite from the early days. I used to say volume four, but no, this one's way better. Um, yeah. Okay, let's move on. Um, oh. Wait, I wanted to show you how Rick is drawn in volume two. Donna um gets her fate in this. Oh, I shouldn't have said that right. Um Rick is drawn like that, really. See, you could really change the see the difference. Um yeah. So that's volume two. Next is volume three. I remember getting this one. It was the first one I like literally continued buying. This is when I started continuously buying the volumes. And, um, I don't remember actually, um, reviewing this one, but it was a very good one. I, I did review it, but I don't remember any of those old reviews. <laughs> um, and because I'm rereading it, I'm gonna be, um, when I do the review, I, I'm doing it right after I've read it, because I used to not do that. I used to do it at the very beginning when I was reading this volume, but not anymore after I started getting a bunch of them. I just couldn't keep up. But this is one of the best ones. I don't want to spoil anything on this one. I guess I already spoiled something. Try not to spoil. No more spoilers. Next is The Heart's Desire. I used to say this one was my favorite. It's when, I guess this isn't really a spoiler, Michonne's introduced into this one. Everyone loves Michonne. Michonne's pretty epic. Um, yeah, this one's a crazy one. This one is crazy. Um, Carol, um, Rick, and Rick in the end, he says, I don't, I, I want to say it, but I don't want to it's fine. He says, we are the walking dead. And that's volume four. Um, so volume four is one of my favorites. It's very fun and... Tyrese and Rick, and all that stuff. Hopefully I've got you to pick up The Walking Dead yourself and try it out, because it is really fun. Even if it does get spoiled, it got spoiled for me. I, I read it right after it ended. It ended in 2019, and I started reading it in, like, 2020, during the pandemic, and so I did get spoilers, but it was still such a fun read. Um, the best defense. This is the governor and the introduction to the governor. This is even crazier. I felt like, just, I felt overwhelmed after I finished this one. That's why I never really liked it and I always put it at the bottom of my list. But now, because it was like the first like dark, dark stuff you got. And that's why it was always at the bottom of my list because I thought, dude, this got dark. I kind of, I like The Walking Dead when it's not that dark. It's like, oh gosh. I mean, you could have your occasional death, but. This is dark. Um, I really did like this one. We're getting to the 10 minute mark, so I'm going to have to end the video. I'm joking. Um, this is going to be a long video. But, yeah. Best Defense. This is a good one. One of those really good early day ones. And, um... Volume 6. This Sorrowful Life. Um, the governor on the back. And, um... Yeah, this one's like... Them just getting back to the prison, Martinez, the prison, and all that stuff. And it ends with, like, Rick being like, we gotta get prepared for this governor guy. He's not a good guy. Um. Like, I'm gonna have to spoil some things to get ahead and stuff. But volume 7, this one was really an aftermath. Or, like, it was kind of the opposite of an aftermath. It was 
setting up for the governor's attack that would happen in the next volume. And we would get the ending where he's like, kill them all. But when we see in the volume A later that, well, he meant to kill all the walkers, not them. Um, oh, I have a Ben Page in here. Ugh, where was that? Oh, that's unacceptable. Ugh, ew, what the heck? Where's that bent? It's not good. Yeah, but Volume 7, I this might be my favorite early day one. Carol, and it it's very, people don't love this one. It's I think it's very underrated. That's Rick holding Lori. I think Judith gets born in this one. Um... Volume 8, Made to Suffer. This is, like, I love this one. This is the one to beat right at the beginning. Um, if I had to rank this, I'd, I I have to put this one at the top still. Um, Volume 8 was one of the best. And, um, this is when The Walking Dead started to pick up and got really, really good. Um, The Governor, Judith, Axel, Carl, Rick, Andrea, Dale... All those people, Herschel, Maggie, Billy, all those people. Like, this was the best time, and the governor gets his eye patch, and it's, like, all scary. And then in the end, the prison falls, and it, like, ends with her, like, where's mom? And so sad. And then we move on to volume nine. That was the um, aftermath of the prison. This one was really good. Um, I remember reading this one. It has Eugene, Abraham, Rosita, um, <laughs> going crazy with the phone. The Carl, like, when he, Carl had to grow up real fast, and, um, it had all that stuff, and, wow, this is a really good one. They actually, in this one, they actually head back to Herschel's farm. It's kind of weird, unlike the TV show, where they never go back to Herschel's farm. Because we spent enough time there in the TV show. Volume 10 is the one I just reviewed. If you've seen that video, you know what happens in this one. Um, I'm going to be reviewing the next one soon. So this is Unknown Territory if you've just been watching my series. And I'll really go buy in the comments. That's, I mean, come on guys, buy the comics. Come on. I don't say every single piece of stuff that happens in the comics in those videos, really. It might seem like it, but no, I don't touch the surface, I feel like. Um, yeah, this one's crazy. Oh, I forgot about this part. I thought this one was in Volume 7 for some reason. Um, yeah. Um, Volume 10. Maggie, Glenn, um, Rick, Abraham, Morgan. Gosh, crazy. Now, we have the Unknown Territory. Gosh. Okay. I'm going to cut, and I'm going to go get a drink of water. Okay. Well, got my glass of water. I really hope you guys went to go get a glass of water. <laughs> um, We're not even halfway through the series. That is very annoying. So, guys, we're not halfway through the video. <laughs> Maybe we're halfway through the video. I wouldn't know that. Volume 11, Fear the Hunters. It's better than Volume 8. I'm sorry. Volume 8. This one's crazy. It has the Hunters, Michonne, Rick, Dale. Oh my gosh, Dale. This is, wow. This volume is awesome. Gabriel, Grab, Grab, you know what I'm talking about. Abraham, Rosita, Eugene, and the it's like, oh, I don't know the cure. I'm not sure if that's in this one, but maybe it is. Yeah. I think I'm going to tell you to know Abraham's origins. Volume 12. The end of the, I'd say, end of the, like, early days. I'd say, because, I mean, I mean, halfway through it, it's, I think this is the last early day one, because it's the introduction to, Al introduction, I can't speak today, to Alexandria, and all that stuff, Rick's, Rick shaves, 
and all that stuff. This is one of my favorite volumes. And then Rick ends up like, oh, we can't trust these people. Get the guns. Yeah, if you watch the TV show, you know what I'm talking about. Now, volume 13, too far gone. This one has to be one of my favorites. It's very, it's sticky. What the heck? It's very, people don't really like this, like, it's underrated because people don't like when we get to Alexandria. They like it when we get to Negan and stuff. But this little middle part is like, people might skip it. And it's, I don't like that because what this one's about is how Ricky and Alex and can't, in the group, can't fit in in Alexandria. And it's very crazy. And in the end, he ends up shooting Pete or whatever. And, um... It's, like, Pete, Jesse, and, like, Rick's getting a love interest after volume 8, and it's crazy. Yeah, that one doesn't get enough love. I love you, volume 13. Now, my personal favorite, volume 14, No Way Out. This, that two, those two volumes were, like, the middle, like, I mean, volume 10 was that middle area maybe at the end of volume 11 but this is where that middle end ended it was those two volumes it's jesse sam and carl um douglas eugene morgan rick of course rick glenn and heath it's crazy michonne and morgan yeah. I love Volume 14. Volume 14, No Way Out, is mostly people's favorites. Okay. Volume 15. Um, this is when we start getting... Well, it's, we find ourselves... This is when we get Rick and Andrea. And that's one of the best stories ever. I love Rick and Andrea. They're pretty awesome. That whole story is awesome. In the end, we get the final part of that. And, um, Rick's like, are you gonna take this away from us? And, like, he gets in that fight. Yeah. Because it's like the aftermath to No Way Out. That's why people don't really like this one. It's an aftermath. I personally liked it. I It's really just that one of those middle ones that, like, no one really needs the larger world. This was the middle of The Walking Dead. This was the middle of the story, and it doesn't feel like the middle of the story, really. It Jesus, Hilltop, Carl, Abraham, Gregory, Rick has his speech, the saviors, and then we get the big one with Abraham and Glenn, and all those people and Negan something to fear this one is absolutely crazy this one is one of my favorites Glenn, Negan, Rick, Abraham, Rosita, Eugene, Dwight Ugh. wow this one was a sad one, and it's a very good one, too. It started the new era, and this is probably my first 20-minute video. I don't know. That's crazy. I'm going to try and wrap it up. Okay. And then, um, I'm going to bring some of these over here so we don't have to keep going over. Um, what comes after? This is, like, really, I don't remember a lot of stuff. It had Ezekiel... This one was one of those that, it's an aftermath, but, oh, I do remember a lot of stuff from it, but it's really not known for that stuff. Really, it kind of, like, it's kind of like, I feel like it's part, like, whenever I think of this volume, I think it's from the other volume right after this. I don't think it's from this volume. I always think it's from March to War. I need to click that to not do that. Because March to War is like where you think everything would be. The big attack happens, Spencer, 
Gregory, all that stuff happens. And you think that, like, this is where it's going to... Like, you think Carl going to the Saviors is a march to war. Because it feels like a march to war moment, but it's really not. It's really a what comes after moment. It's weird. I'm going to show these off together. All at war. This was the best time for The Walking Dead. No bad, doubt about it. I I gotta say that. That was the best time for The Walking Dead. All Out War was awesome. I love the saviors and Negan and Rick. Like, they just fight. Rick slits Negan's throat. It's awesome. And Negan's probably the most beloved character in The Walking Dead, I'd say. Like, at least in my opinion. He... You could tell Megan's one of my favorite characters because what the heck? I have this. I have Lucille or whatever. Um, it's okay to do that because it's fictional. Let's grab these four. A new beginning. Yumiko, Luke, Magna, Magna's group. Yeah. Um, in the introduction to the Whispers, Old Man Rick. Carl is like a teenager now. Lydia, I'm not sure if Lydia's in this one. Yeah, Lydia's not in this one. Dante, Dante. Yeah, new beginning. Awesome. And then this is the one with Lydia and Carl and all that stuff. This one is awesome. I can't wait till I get to the review for this. That's going to be so much fun. I really don't want to spoil any of that this stuff because this is one of my favorite. I, I love the Whisperer storyline. I am Alpha. <laughs> I, I, I say I am Alpha. But more than I say I am Megan. <laughs> um, Life and Death. This is the festival. If you watch the TV show, you know what I'm talking about. Oh. Oh, mm, oh this is, yeah. This is crazy. I love this one. <laughs> Rick yells at Olivia. He's like, why'd you let him out? It's crazy. Yeah, that one's just crazy. That one's just freaking crazy. Now, no turning back. This one's like Negan's the devil on your soul. You know what I'm talking about. And, um, is this the one where it happens? Oh, no. Yeah, this is the one's like, Rick Grimes, Rick Grimes. Yeah. And, like, they're, they're stuck between, are we going to war with the Whispers, or are we gonna stay with peace with them? But in the end, they do go to war with them, you'll see later on. No turning back. Let's grab these last ones. Call to Arms is Dwight and his army on there. This one, it, it has like Negan, the Whispers. This one's crazy, and it's Alpha. It's like Mistake, and it's the March to the Whisper War. It's March to the Whisper War. I always think this is the Whisper War. Like, I always think. I always mix these two together. Whisper War and March to War. No, it's not March to War. It's Call to Arms. Gosh. Because we know they're going to go to war. We know it. Because of Volume 25. But they just don't. It's weird. Wait a minute. No, no, no. Okay, Whisper War and Certain Doom I'm going to show off together. It's one of those all out war situations. Because um, I feel like these ones, they are kind of the same thing. They're kind of both the Whisper War. This one ends with, um, Beta's not even dead yet in the end of this one. I don't think Beta dies till Lines We Cross. So I don't think the Whisper War really ends till Lines We Cross. There's like one more big battle after that. But we have the Whisper War, and this is, um... Gabriel, um, Beta, Rick, Negan, Negan in this one, oh, Negan and him, Hilltop and stuff, oh, this one's crazy, did I put that one over there, right. um, and then certain dooms, by looking at this, I'll just tell you guys who've read the comics like I have, <laughs> yeah, um, this one is one of my favorites, Sherry, and it's like, uh, yeah, I, I love this one, this is awesome, yeah. The walkers, like, break down the fence, and everyone's like, oh, no, it's like a no way out, it's like no way out, but they know how to 
figure it out. Princess with Lines We Cross. We're almost to that 25 minutes. Gosh. Okay. <laughs> Lines We Cross. Yeah, this one is. We found out about Sadiq and Rosita. And then this is the last time we really do see Negan. That's kind of sad. I feel like I wish we had more time. We had. There was. Three more volumes. And this is the last one we see Negan in? Come on. Lines We Cross. But I mean, I feel like it's a good ending. We get Maggie and Dante. Right? Negan's like, please kill me. Um, and then we get the Commonwealth. It's New World Order. And Rick's like, then maybe we need a New World Order. And it's the Commonwealth. It's all that stuff. It's Michonne and you know who. Michonne and her daughter. I have to say it. All that stuff. Maggie and Dante. Sophia, Maggie, and Dante. <laughs> the Mercer. The um, Eugene. The Princess. Sadiq. All those people. I always say Ezekiel when I say Sadiq. It's so annoying. The Rotten Core. I've heard that people don't like this one. I can see where they're coming from. I feel like this one is a very controversial one because of the death in it. Um, if you read the comics, you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's pretty much the end of the saviors, really. Um, I'm not talking about Negan, just so you, none of you know. <laughs> um, Michonne and the judge and the riots. Yeah, this one's a really controversial one. And I like I like the Ronin Corps. It's not that bad. Because I think it's... People don't look about what it's really about. I think it's really about how Rick is kind of discovering that the Commonwealth looks like a beautiful place. But really it has a Ronin core. And then we have Rest in Peace. I feel like Rest in Peace was rushed. I feel like they could have had this, how Robert Kirkman saw this ending, but I feel like they should have ended it where, you know, Rick, um, they should have ended it before the final issue. And I think the final, final issue is big enough to have its own volume, like maybe have I mean, it's good. I think it's... To volume readers, I think it'd be really annoying if we had to buy a whole nother volume to see the end. I feel like that'd actually be pretty annoying. So I'm actually glad it had this, but... Yeah, this one was really good. I really liked Rest in Peace. And I was kind of sad when I finished reading it. When Rick's end came, I was like, oh, ugh. I felt sad. I felt... Yeah, so... I'm not gonna bother holding up all those... <laughs> volumes. Ah, do it. Come on. Ah. Oh my gosh. No water. No, 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 no. Well... <clears throat> there they are. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no! Dead pool! <laughs> Well, everybody, I hope I love The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead is one of my favorite series of all time, and the words from you know who herself. I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't read it. Read it, or even read it again. It's it's very, and I, I put that in quotation marks to the person in here. <laughs> Quotation marks, read it again, okay? Okay, I'm I'm reading it again. It's a very good series. It's a very, very, very good series. And gosh, that really no, no, don't freaking kill that pool. Come on, Lucy, oh gosh. Um so the way you should read it is you should read volume one through thirty-two. Then go to Here's Nigga and then do all the spin offs if you really want to. But really, just read 1 through 32. You'll get enough story that you need. 
But then if you really need more, like I do, buy all the spin-offs, buy the deluxe. I haven't bought the deluxe. But, and I haven't bought all the spin-offs. The only spin-off I have is here Negan. Here's Negan. But I do have one more thing that I want to show you. I got it with Here's Negan. It actually comes with the Barnes & Noble stuff. It's pretty epic. I don't know where I put it. I'm going to not play it where I'm supposed to. Oh, no, that's good. Um, I actually have issue 100. Does this have a letter hack issue 100? Yeah, it does have a letter hack. I need to read that. <laughs> um, yeah, bring him up. Ta ta. And Carl ends up saying that too. That's. One of the most epic moments, I'd say. Yeah. Um, by the Barnes Noble issue 100, I think you get this. I'm not sure, maybe it was just passed up early. I don't really remember. This is the Barnes Noble variant, you can see at the top. So, yeah, um, this is getting too long of a video. I don't know what that's. Um, thank you if you came this long. This is a very long video, so thank you if you did come this long. Um, so, yeah. Um, tell me if you want to see any more of my collections. Maybe once I finish showing off all my Funko Pops, I will do a full Funko Pop haul. You could probably see them in the background this whole time, but... I will do separate videos on... You've been seen. Queen Elizabeth back there the whole time. I know you have. Um, and her dog. I forgot the name. Friggin people make fun of me whenever I see the name wrong, so I'm not gonna make. I'm not gonna friggin make fun of myself by <laughs> saying the name wrong. But here's Negan right Great. Now I'm just quoting the book at this point. But yeah. Oh look, it's 32 minutes, 32 volumes. That's great. Bye. But like. Maybe we should get it to 33 for here. Okay, come on. No, stop. Stop stalling. Okay, bye.